About 90 million Nigerians live in extreme poverty and about 30% of its population of 200 million are unemployed. The COVID-19 pandemic has destroyed people's lives and livelihoods and Nigeria, like several countries around the world, plunged into a recession. But a new report is offering a glimmer of hope. The African Union Development Agency and the new Partnership for African Development says Nigeria has built a thriving, sustainable economy and prioritized the improvement of its agricultural sector. AUDA NEPAD said the Nigerian government has also enhanced social inclusion and poverty reduction, as well as building a system to fight corruption and improve governance. I am proud to inform you that the APRM National Secretariat, together with the National Governing Council of APRM Nigeria, worked with the support of the relevant stakeholders despite the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic to make this a reality in view of the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding uh, between the committee, um, committee of Head of State and Government participating in the African Peer Review Mechanism. Well, joining me in the studio for more on this is Gloria Akobundo, who is the CEO of New Partnership for Africa Development on NEPAD here in Nigeria. And uh, welcome you to the show. Thank now, let's talk much. about this uh, peer review mechanism of uh, NEPAD and this um, second edition uh, for Nigeria. Nigeria was peer reviewed by this report that you released, and it's called The Country High in Terms of Agriculture and Infrastructure Development and all of that. Tell us more about that. Thank you very much for having me. Um, yes, uh, our country, Nigeria, today has done beautifully well in terms of the assessment taken during the conduct of the second peer review. Nigeria, then the heads of states and government of the African Union, they looked at the continent. Where are we? What are we doing? What do we need to do better? How do we come together to build our continent, to make it the Africa we want? Africa developing Africa, Africa growing Africa's economy, Africa industrializing Africa, Africa creating jobs for Africans. Dear Give Bet, the new partnership for Africa's development as a tool or a vehicle to economic development and growth. So having done that, they now look at the policies. How can they sustain that particular policy that can enhance good governance in our continent? That's okay. They need to introduce the M&A, &E, monitoring and evaluation for sustainability of good governance, practices, and best policies in our continent. There, give back the African peer review mechanism. To do what? To extract the governor, to institutionalize good governance by best practice and good policies. To ensure growth, to ensure uh, experience sharing and among develop countries among and countries, and among heads of states, among mm. the people of the continent. Best practices, best, encourage best practices, and then experience sharing on what, or way forward, or be, which way, or uh, best practice they can use to sustain good governance in our continent. So they get back the, the, there comes the African peer review mechanism. Yeah, and so a lot of, um, sorry to cut you short, a lot of um, our viewers want to know uh, um, the parameters you set in reviewing, in doing this peer-to-peer -peer review, uh, maybe like between Nigeria and South Africa, or Nigeria and Ghana, or Nigeria and Morocco, and all of that. What are the parameters you set in place when doing this peer review? Yes, if you don't get the history of where it's coming from, you might not understand the practice okay, of what we're doing. So, the second, Nigeria was peer reviewed first in 2008. And during the peer review, what this really meant or meant to Africa is not um, trying to undermine the leadership of various countries. And we have 42 countries participating in the African peer review mechanism. And what do they do? You are now managing this organization, and another person is managing another organization. They come to you. What, are, what practice are you, what policies are you implementing that is enhancing 
development and growth in your organization. You were able to pay your salaries, you were able to take care of your bills, you were able to employ more than expected, you were able to be professional in what you're doing. So what do, are you doing best that we need to know? That's the meaning of that. What is South Africa doing best that Nigeria needs to share with? What is Ghana doing best that Nigeria, what are their policies working for them in terms of growth, in terms of development, in terms of economic growth, in terms of job creation and all that, including cross-cutting issues? What are their challenges and the ways of addressing them that is bringing good governance and enhancing development in their, con in their country? So that is African peer review mechanism. Leaders coming together to say, Nigeria is doing well in infrastructural development. How are you doing it? Nigeria will share the experience. First of all, there were this administration of questionnaire to ascertain by the people voluntarily telling the, the, the review mission, the other country, because these people, the mission were drawn from across the continent. It's not just, it's not Nigeria, but they gave us the questionnaire, go to nick and cranny of the country, like local government, like the world, like the business uh, entities, like public private sector, including the civil society. Take this document, look at it, tell us what is going on in your country, what are the best practice, what are you happy with, what are you not happy with, where we were, where we are, and where we want to be more or less like shaping the future, drawing from yesterday's experience to today, and then what we want to become of tomorrow. So that's what it's all about. Very interesting submission indeed. And now let's take a look at agriculture and infrastructure development that Nigeria scored high. What are the specifics in those areas that uh, made you, the country score high? If you look at it, when President Muhammadu Buhari came into office, he said diversification of economy via agriculture. Why does he have uh, food soldiers, appointees to help him, is to look at that policies and drive it. And that's exactly what Nepal is all about. Driving the, the, the policies of the heads of state, decision of the heads of states and government. And this is a very good policy. And if you look at it, Nigeria came into it, both public, private, and private sector, including the smallholder farmers. Everybody came into it. Take, for example, if we had not done that to support our economy for food sufficiency, and if we did not create strong policies, many people are criticizing, oh, borders have been closed. Yes, of course. So that we can be real Africa. We can be Nigerians. Today we are proud to use uh, made in Nigerian products, including food and clothing and all, uh, some other uh, productions from Nigeria, including cosmetics, which is interesting. That is in the other way around, growing our economy, creating jobs, direct and indirect jobs. So when, this, when President said diversification of economy via agriculture, it's, it's a policy, it's a command, it's something to be looked into and drive it. What do we do? We have to look at the policies, the way of doing it. For example, you have the ease of doing business, border is closed, yes, but in return, it has added value to our economy and development, job creation, and food sufficiency. Take, for an instance, the COVID-19 pandemic challenges. Yeah, which is what I really have wanted food. to come. Assuming so. we don't have food, we would have all died of hunger. That's the reality. Because other countries yes, shut down their borders. They were down. not willing to import. Even the importation. You know, the people bringing <laughs> the food. To food to us and exactly. all of that. Couldn't even produce. Europeans were shut down, America, all over the world. Even the China couldn't produce. But that single policy helped us to survive and to sustain our economy for, that, for this pandemic, which is still ongoing. You know? So that so made us score high of points. Of course, yeah. because that was <laughs> a smart decision and a smart directive, right, right directive. Now, in let's the, talk about the second right leg, which has to do with infrastructure. Infrastructure, of course. If you, you are made, I think you know more than me. Today, look at the railway uh, system, for example. So when we sign the AFTA, free trade movements and their goods, how do we realize that without uh, ensuring the right thing is done, putting up the right policies and plans that will bring the realization of that goal? So this is one of it. The, what, uh, having transportation, both road construction massively across the country, this government has really done well in that aspect. You look at the railway system, look, I, we can't even count anymore. Today, transportation has, is, is a bit easier 
Yes, of course, all of us can attest to that. Although it's more expensive. It, it, <laughs> a lot of our viewers will tell you that it's more expensive, especially like, I mean, taking the flight from Abuja to Lagos now. I tell you it's 50000 It wasn't like that maybe a few months back. By the time the project, by the time REL goes round from what Minister of, uh, or Ministry of uh, Transportation is doing, I bet you the price will come down. We need to own it. We need to change our narrative. We need to commend where best practices is okay. Other countries were commending Nigeria. I ain't ready to come to Nigeria. The launch of the, of the report, I believe you will be there. You will also hear other countries. What are they coming to do? To learn from us. To look at the policies. How did we get to this? What, how did we plan? How did we get started? How did we change our transport system overnight? They want to learn. They want to also implement because that's the only way the continent can grow, Africa can grow Africa. Because if we can move freely, our goods can move freely, smallholder farmers can produce and take to market without stress. My dear, that, that's the economy we are talking about. Necessities, there are things that are necessary, there are pri uh, priorities that uh, uh, must do for us to get to where we want to be. Uh, okay, and um, a lot of uh, viewers also be interested in knowing when other countries are coming to study us in, as part of the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, review mechanism, uh, what sort of areas are they interested in, in seeing uh, some things that can galvanize their own economies or societies to change for good? They are looking at our democracy and political governance. They are looking at our social economic governance. They are looking at our corporate governance. That is it. Yeah, and uh, I was you reading know? somewhere the, that Nigeria has a huge number of billionaires. They are also that. So looking so at North our African economic governance. Of out. course, the private sector, <laughs> you see, I keep saying it. Government don't create jobs. They make policies. Once you allow the private uh, entities to come in into governance, coming in with their own ideology, government giving them the enabling environment, all this problem will be a thing of the past. Because it's, it's come one, come all. Division of labor, you play your own. Government give you the enabling, enabling environment, give you the right policies, support you, and then you go ahead and exploit. Yeah, that is it. Bus businesses so, are still crying exactly. out though that the government hasn't done so much in uh, encouraging manufacturing. How do you think that we can do more I in terms of electric? electricity supply to these uh, uh, manufacturing plants and all Already that. His Excellency has made it a priority to ensure that there is stab uh, uh, stable power and uh, petroleum products in Nigeria. So let's give him time to do whatever he wants to do there because I believe the same way he transformed agriculture, the same way we have an infrastructural revolution, the same way we are trying to shape other uh, uh, aspects of governance this also will be a thing of the past. It's just that Nigerians need to be patient. We don't praise ourselves. We only see the other side. Yeah, and people will also the, say, the how, other, patient, exactly. how much patient can we be? Also, because, I mean, it this government time. was given Come two on. mandates. When did we even, my, four when did we even come to democratic <laughs> government? Let's face the reality. From military rule, from 1960 when we got our independence to the military rule, from there to just 1999. Come on. We are comparing ourselves to be America that has been there, the UK and all the... Why don't we give ourselves time? I think what we need to do is to give government time, be patient with them, thank them for the one that are doing well, partner with them, collaborate with them. What is important now is to harness our population to productivity. And uh -huh. with all these policies and the review, reform, and all these policies, thank God we even were able to assess all the gender and the use and all that. Come all on. Right. Very interesting it development. It will help Although us get there. Some of the countries, we all got independence with some of them. I mean, they've left us behind. We <laughs> so are more we than them. More. 200 plus. <laughs> okay, Mil well. 200, 200 million, million people. Uh, all right. Plus. Uh, we have to go on this short break. When we come back, thank we'll continue you. the conversation. You're still watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Somna Sambo. 
A peer-reviewed report from an African Union Development Agency says Nigeria has recorded immense success in infrastructural development and agricultural revolution. Nigeria was also highly rated in its fight against corruption and humanitarian services. Still with me in the studio is Gloria Kobondo, who is the CEO of New Partnership for Africa Development Nigeria office. Um, so good to still have you here with us. Let, let's talk about the other aspects of um, you know the ratings, uh, which were very high. I mean, anti-corruption, fighting against anti-corruption. A lot of people may want to dispute that with the Nigerian authorities saying that, I mean, we've seen corruption rising in the country. Uh, we've seen lots of reports coming in, including one from the Transparency International. What do you make of the ratings that uh, you have pushed out, which scores Nigeria high? Of course, for the fact that we put even the policy together to check, to put check and balances, both at the public-private sector, our uh, mode of operations and what we do with public funds and all that is, is a plus for the fact that we put that in place. It's a plus. And again, if you look at, though it suffers setback, but we are, we are on the move. We are moving, we are checking, we are advocating, of which Nepal has been one of the agencies advocating for this in partnership with EFCC and ICP and other anti-corruption agencies. So that is okay, because it's better to prevent than to wait for uh, getting people and doing that. So you're saying we've been able to put the right laws? Of course, and the all of right that, laws, the right policy, the right policies, the awareness is very high. We've launched out both home and outside. We've launched on illicit financial flows at the margin of uh, uh, um, United Nations uh, Summit, a side event with Mr. President there and anti-corruption agencies um, heads there, other countries and all that, more or less like a peer learning too, to look at what they are doing, their own policies, uh, uh, listening to world leaders speak on these policies and how best practice or whatever, or how they can support us to succeed. So we are making move on that. So, and it's a plus. Let's talk and about the... putting it together comes to our findings from the first peer review, that's the National Program of Action, and the second National Program of Action. So these are areas we've looked into during the peer review. It's not Nigeria looking, it's the Africa, the continent, the member states looking at it to say, you are doing well already on this, sustain this. You, are, you have challenges here. What do you do? They profile ideas, solutions, advices, and all that. Do they and provide funds to, too? Of <laughs> course, if you, if, you, if, you, if you also give room, because some of the uh, uh, collaboration program does our support. We have development partners supporting us to achieve our goal. We have even private sector support from Nigeria. So his ability to open the door and uh, let them come do what uh, uh, add value to what the government is doing, like I said, is public-private uh, partnership in, uh, that boosts governor, good governance in any society. So we are working on our national program of action. Where yeah, we'll which is one thing I'm also interested in knowing. The national program of action, what is it all about, actually? What it's all about is our estray. Just like you go to your doctor, you say, come on, estray, examine me. I have headache, I have stomach upset, I have this, I have that. Doctor will look at you and say, ah, maybe these are not your problem. You are just stressed. Rest, sleep, wake up, drink a lot of water. That's the meaning of that. So what is it that they have identified that we need to address? And what is it that we're doing well that we need to sustain? And what is the solution to going out from what is not right to best practice? That's the National Program of Action. And from the time between 2008, Nigeria was first peer reviewed to date. What have we done well that we need to keep, which is in the report? And what is it that is not going well that we need to change? is in the report. And what strategy are we going to use? Then we take the advices and solutions. If we need to meet other countries too, to look at their own practice and how they're doing, we do that. Now, so, what are the areas that we're not doing well that um, other countries are peer reviewed us on and uh, what sort of advice are they giving to us on what to do to improve those areas? Yes, there's no country without challenges. For example, we can say insecurity, but wait until we dissect the report. The president is going to launch the report, and then we'll be able to extract the, the points they made where we're not practicing well that we need to build on. 
And the one we're doing well, we will celebrate where we're doing well and call other countries to, <laughs> to also learn from us, <laughs> of which a lot of them are out there. Yeah. So, and and uh, one interesting thing about this uh, peer review mechanism that is that it's a voluntary exercise absolutely. that countries subject absolutely. themselves to and say, absolutely. you come in and see what I'm doing and then absolutely. you give advice. So it's a measure of transparency in That's itself it. because some other countries don't like others from outside coming Correct. to do that. But let's talk about why you had to take um, from 2008 till now before we do a second uh, peer review. That is where we congratulate President Muhammad Buhari. I see that man as our father, our leader, and a transparent leader. Because it's not easy. No manager will want to invite outsiders to his company or to his own to come and criticize him. In the first place, it takes courage, transparency, honesty, to be able to do that. So. For him to have accepted, Nigerians should congratulate him. So other For previous accepted. presidents refused to I don't know. Maybe they, <laughs> did, maybe they didn't think the in that direction. To come and, and I the don't country. know about that. Maybe they okay. didn't think in that direction. But okay. for this man to come up uh, to say, come and extreme me. Tell me what I'm doing right that I need to sustain. Tell me what I'm doing wrong that I need to change. I think Nigeria should congratulate him. And what do you think about the government itself? Do you think the government is delivering the dividends of democracy, as we like to say it in this part of the country, uh, part of the world, I mean? Do you think uh, the, 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 all the things that Nigerians are saying, the complaints here and there, are just, you know, uh, people not seeing developments going on between uh, or around them? Anyway, there's this saying that says Rome was not built in a day. This is a country, like I said of over 200 million Nigerians. Everybody with his own opinion and agenda. So it's not easy for one day over a night to just shape things and make it good. But so far, let us for once be happy as Nigerians. Beat our chest to say we are good to go. In as much as there are once we are even doing well, from the experience of what we're doing well, we address our challenges. All we need is to be together, love one another, preach peace, and be in harmony and peace with one another. It will get what we will get there. We're just young in democracy. Come on, we are. So, what are the kind of countries that we are competing with in terms of development? If you look at the continent, you have about 52 to 54 countries, so to say. Uh, what are the countries that are actually competing with Nigeria in terms of providing services to citizens, good governance, and all of that? Let me tell you, to be honest, every country in this continent is working hard to be there. COVID 19 has exposed us to a lot of challenges and a lot of hidden, uh, hidden uh, 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 skills, let me put it that way. The young people now are exploiting the technology avenue, exploiting the private sector avenue, doing a whole lot to put food on the table, grow our economy, create jobs. So like I said, all Nigeria need to do is to use the population advantage. That is it. Our, gov our government, they are amending policies. If you look at, look at the passage of uh, people with disabilities, was it there before? Not too young to run. Was it there before? A lot is going on. Look at uh, electoral reform. Today, we are Mr. President next. Sign our electoral reform <laughs> uh, the, bill. A bill. Come on. These are all cross-cutting issues that has been there, challenges. But the man is addressing it. He's, the government of President Mohammed Buhari gradually is gr addressing all these challenges. So, so as the government uh, is trying to wind up, I mean, it's second time, what do you think is the legacy that uh, the All Progressive Congress administration led by President Mohammed Buhari is leaving behind after eight years uh, if uh, all things go well by next year? If I may say, infrastructure is a good legacy. Food sufficiency is a legacy you don't know what it means for a mother not to have a have food at home yeah but there's still so many then, hungry nigerians out there well, too i mean <laughs> yeah so but there are policies there are ways that are there's progress in the food production so we can take that and then you look at transportation fantastic we are getting there gradually so a whole lot when we unbundle the report, you will see what Nigeria has done well and what Nigeria has not done well. If every Nigerian from the local government, the uni, the world can 
come together to fight insecurity, no nation will be able to challenge Nigeria in development. Now, we what, have what will you say to the critics of the government, actually, <laughs> in the midst of all you have said? No, critics is very important most times in governance because it helps you to be on your toes to deliver good governance. So we welcome it. Okay, interesting. Uh, Gloria Akobundu, and you're also a princess, like I learned. Uh, we must uh, thank you for joining thank us on the show much. to take a look at uh, Nigeria's peer review mechanism uh, result, the outcome of that second peer review exercise. Well, that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Somna Sambu.